Let's make this even more clear for those watching at home. Bragg is going after Jim Jordan. Jordan chairs the Judiciary Committee that called for these documents and testimony. Is the subpoena of a previous prosecutor or of Bragg himself what initiated this lawsuit? The subpoena is of a previous prosecutor, Mark Pomerantz, who resigned. And Alvin Bragg is arguing that Jim Jordan does not have the constitutional ability to subpoena Pomerantz. And he's further arguing that these inquiries by Jordan could reveal proceedings in the grand jury, which under New York law are supposed to be secret. The House Judiciary Committee, they're actually holding that field hearing in New York City, uh, as Tom was talking about, over what they call Bragg's pro-crime, also anti-victim policies. That's completely separate from the indictment. What are the grounds for this? Well, these are really an attempt by the Republicans to have a sort of a, a combination punch, to extend your, your boxing metaphor. On one hand, they can tag Democrats as weak on crime, on the other, the suggestion there is that the district attorney is being wrongfully focused on former President Trump and what many people think of as a rather flimsy case rather than crime rates in Manhattan. Now, the district attorney shoots back that crime rates have actually declined somewhat year to date since he took office. Well, House Republicans, they flipped four seats in New York State in last year's midterms. Crime in New York City seen as a big factor. As many New Yorkers, like in other cities, they've grown weary of the violence uh, there. So, so obviously Manhattan is a Democratic stronghold. Have they lost some of their footing in light of all of these different dramatic proceedings that are happening right now? I think in Manhattan itself, that's going to remain a Democratic stronghold for the foreseeable future. But the electoral consequences that you mentioned have occurred, you know, just on the in the suburbs of New York City, Long Island particularly. And I think that in those kind of constituencies, those kind of districts, crime has been a big issue. It has been an issue that has been to Democrats' detriment. And I think this is something that is clearly been pursued by Republicans, uh, you know, for sincere reasons, but also to press their political advantage on that topic. And a lot of people have talked about whether or not this will impact the GOP race, whether it will impact a former President Trump. That's kind of boring to me right now, honestly, because he can still run, whether he's indicted or he's behind bars or not. Uh, but Bragg's suit uh, against Jordan says that the subpoena and other demands uh, for highly sensitive and confidential information that belongs to the office of the DA and the people of New York, uh, that this has no legitimate legislative purpose. Is this some type of distraction tactic or are Republicans simply using the weight that they carry to try to get people to see, including the prosecutor or DA, uh, Alvin Bragg, that this is a nothing, nothing, nothing case? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, Congressman Jordan is an unapologetic ally of former President Trump. So obviously he wants to put a case that is sympathetic to Trump. Alvin Bragg is arguing that he doesn't have the right to this information. When you strip away the legalese and the kind of opaque language, what Bragg is concerned about is Jordan using information he gets to feed it into the public arena and to help Trump. Now, Jordan thinks that the whole case is politicized and, and a kind of um, a pantomime, really. So that's why he is making, uh, obviously, the opposite argument, saying he needs this information for legitimate purposes. And we will see how legitimate it all is. Niall Stanage, good to see you finally this morning. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.